Okay, so thank you so much everybody for joining us. This is our second Navigating Northern for our kickoff to open house on April 8th. Um, so thank you so much for joining. We really designed this around, like I said, to kick off open house. It's our first ever, ever virtual open house with all the campuses, you know, doing one big event. So we're excited. And uh, what we've done here is we've kind of created a preset uh, list of questions, which uh, as recruiters, we often get asked or things that we thought you might need to know about these specific programs or the communities and areas that they're in. So today's topic, like Doug said, uh, it's about welding, implementation, mining, environmental uh, tech program as well. So lots of fun, good information coming your way tonight. Um, we're going to start doing intros first, then we'll move to that interview portion. <coughs> And then we'll get into the Q&A. If you have any questions at all, jot them down in the chat. I think it's Hope. Hope will be monitoring the chat and uh, we'll uh, be asking the questions at the end to everyone. So send those below. It is being recorded, as you can see, as you saw us struggle to do, but it is being recorded. And uh, if you didn't get the chance to join us live tonight, you will be able to watch us later on our website. Okay, so let's do the introductions. I'm gonna call on everyone just because we got a lot of people on tonight. So I'll go first. Uh, my name is Kara. I am the Southern Ontario Liaison Recruitment Officer. Um, normally I'll be in classrooms out in the community. Things are a little bit different than normal this year and last year, uh, but we're doing our best trying to make our presence more known online. So. Uh, thank you for joining us, guys, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, Sumit. Hi, I'm Sumit Swami, Liaison and Recruitment Officer, same as Kara, but I'm more located towards the north. So if you're up here, then you will be talking to me. I'm the guy who's going to the high school. I'm the one who's driving their car if you see up north here somewhere. Perfect. Okay, Hope. Hope Koozies. I'm the Indigenous Recruiter and Pathways Navigator at Northern College. Uh, similar with Sumit, I'm the person you wanna to go to if you self-identify as Indigenous. I'm the one recruiting in, North, in Northern Ontario as well. Okay, let's move to Jim then. Okay, so I'm the uh, program coordinator for the mining, the instrumentation and the mineral exploration programs. And if you are interested in any of those programs, please come talk to me and ask me questions. Um, sorry, I, I missed a few other things. What, what else am I supposed to be talking about here? That's it, Jim. That works. That's good? Okay. Okay, Doug. Yeah, so I'm Doug Clark, and I'm an academic dean at Northern College, and I have the great pleasure of working with Professor and Program Coordinator Richard Callio, who wasn't able to join us uh, tonight, so we've I've got him featured in my background over one shoulder there, but um, anyway, I'll speak on the college's behalf about uh, drinking water and wastewater management in our program. Awesome, thank you. Okay, Josh. Hi, I'm uh, the program coordinator for the welding programs at Northern. So that includes the welding fitter program, welding engineering technician program, and the welding engineering technology program. Awesome. Okay, you answered my second question, but for those that didn't, let's start uh, with you, Jim. What programs do you represent? What credentials are those programs? And at which campus are these programs available at? Okay, so let, let's start with the mining program. Uh, the mining program is a uh, online program, so you can study it from anywhere in the world. Uh, at the moment, we have students from as far away as the Northwest Territories, Madagascar, India, and soon we'll have a student from Mongolia, actually. So wow. all across Canada and the world. Um, however, we all come together in Halebury, Ontario, for two weeks in May to learn all kinds of practical skills like um, mineralogy and geology, surveying, mineral processing, things like that, where we actually need to be hands-on and see this for ourselves. So that's two weeks in May. Uh, that the mining program leads to a two-year program, leads to a diploma. Okay, mineral exploration program is similar in that it's an online program and has a two-week field school in Timmins where you learn all sorts of uh, hands-on, how do you actually do mineral exploration in, in the field, those, those sorts of skills. 
And that uh, two week field school happens in Timmins and it's a one year program. In other words, the two four month semesters and then the two week field school and that, that leads to a certificate. The instrumentation program is a little different in that it's, uh, well, when there isn't COVID, it's normally on site. So it's um, in Halebury and uh, there's lots of great labs. Uh, just the professors have made um, labs that, again, I'm both a mining engineer and electronics engineer, so I can appreciate these labs. I'd say it would probably cost 10 to $20 million to do what they'd have done from scratch. And um, there's just, the, these are amazing uh, skills you can learn there in instrumentation. And that's, of course, why it has to be on site, because you're in these labs learning it from, from the masters. Uh, that's a two-year program, and that leads to a diploma. And Jim's being very modest. Um, the other point that he didn't mention was that he or some of his colleagues have been teaching mining and related subjects in the Hillybury, based in Hillybury, since 1912. Yeah, so the um, cobalt silver boom started in 1903. Um, my family got there in 1910, actually, and uh, have been there ever since. Uh, in 1912, they realized with 35,000 people in cobalt, more money than Toronto, let me tell you. And they had the cobalt silver, silver kings that were later um, renamed to the uh, uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Anyway, the number of people they needed to run the 100 mines in the cobalt area required them to start the Halebury School of Mines in 1912. Uh, instrumentation was added in 1967 when the Halebury School of Mines joined Northern College, when Northern College started. And then uh, we st two years ago, we started the mineral exploration program. Uh, all of these programs are gonna be needed to feed the uh, present gold boom and the soon to happen elect electrical materials boom. We're gonna need cobalt, nickel, copper, and lithium to make all the batteries that will be needed by the world. And that will sell, set off a, a uh, exploration and mining uh, frenzy in Northern Ontario, which is getting geared up. Awesome, okay, thank you. Uh, let's move to you, Doug. So um, what programs do you represent? What credentials and which campuses are they offered? Okay, so uh, Northern College created an environmental technician hyphen water and wastewater systems operations program. And it's a two year Ontario college diploma and you can take it in two years, but we've also squished the four academic semesters into three academic semesters. For those that are, are in a hurry to quit being a student and start being out in the workforce and get some uh, cash rolling into your pockets as opposed to going out of your pockets to the college or elsewhere. Um, so that's offered at our, our Kirkland Knight campus, and it's the fastest path in Ontario for people that want to work um, in keeping the drinking water safe in communities anywhere in the province and in um, wastewater management, which is also keeping communities and their drinking water supplies safe uh, anywhere in the province. So it's a, it's a very stable line of work, almost unheard of for someone to be laid off in that line of work. And our program was uh, crafted specifically uh, to give people the, the trades background, the kind of a jack of all trades in some ways, a background to, to work in this field. What awesome. do you judge? Quick, quick in and out and a guaranteed kind of job, right? Like you, they're in demand and high demand. There's not many programs available. Um, there's, uh, well, we're in partnership with uh, one other college um, in Southern Ontario. We do some cross teaching, but the two of us have the most specialized focus on this area. There's about 10,000 licensed uh, water operators, drinking water, wastewater in the province. And annually, that's maybe roughly a thousand job openings that should be coming up. Um, and it's, it's good paying work. And uh, it's, as I say, it's, 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 it's very stable. So for those that want to make a a difference, positive difference to the environment and their community every day. It's a really interesting um, line of work. Perfect. Okay, thanks, Doug. All right, Josh, your turn. Do you want me to repeat the question or do you, you know, what you yeah. know? Well, I, I think the question specifically is what credentials are offered as part of the program, but uh, I'll maybe won't stick to totally to that script because I see my colleagues aren't either. So I'll uh, share with you some other facts as well. Um, so yeah, so our, our uh, welding fitter program, um, it, the, the certification that you're getting there 
is uh, possibly you can you can get your CWB tickets, which allows you to work um, in, in welding structural steel. Um, so at the conclusion of the program, students are given an opportunity to, to complete CWB testing. Um, and we, we bring in a, um, a CWB inspector to uh, supervise that. Um, and the, the rate that's offered for students is half the industry rate. So it's a, a really big advantage to be able to get that certification. Uh, kind of gives you a foot in the door in the welding industry once you have one of those tickets. Um, of course, you also get the two-year uh, college diploma. So that's uh, another feather in your cap, of course. And uh, students that um, complete that program could also continue on into our welding engineering technician program. So the welding engineering technician program is also a two-year diploma, although it's not compressed. So the welder fitter program is compressed. It's a two-year diploma offered in one year. The, uh, the welding engineering technician program is offered over the full two years. And uh, part of the reason for that is it has a co-op option. So students that, uh, that take that program have the opportunity to complete uh, the co-ops, which means they get a co-op diploma instead of a, uh, a non-co-op diploma. While they, finish, while they complete that, uh, that program, they also get to do inspection training. So um, there's a government organization called the Canadian General Standards Board uh, that issues certifications for inspectors. And our students get uh, certification in radiography, uh, ultrasound, magnetic particle inspection, and liquid penetrant inspection. And they also can get their visual, um, their CWB visual level one certification. So a lot of inspection credentials are offered as part of that two-year program. Um, and inspection is a very lucrative career. So many of our students right now um, go into the inspection field because uh, it's possible to, uh, to make you know, six-figure salaries in those types of positions um, after a few years of experience. So um, the, what we're offering as, as part of that program is the classroom training requirements for those inspection certifications. Uh, once you graduate, you get the work experience and then you write a qualification exam to get the, uh, to get the full certification. And then on to the three-year program. So if you finish the welding engineering technician program, you can take one additional year of study. So you get your two-year diploma and then you can return for one more year of study to get the welding engineering technology diploma and uh, when you finish that diploma, you're eligible to complete an examination at um, the Canadian Welding Bureau to become an international welding technologist. So we are one of only two organizations in North America that are recognized training bodies um, for this credential. So um, it's pretty rare. And what it does is it allows you to get work internationally. So there's more than 50 countries worldwide that are IIW member countries. And, uh, you know, we've had students in the past that have gone to work in places like Germany um, because those are IIW mem member countries. Your credentials are instantly recognized. Of course, you can also get uh, certifications that I would expect other technician technology programs at the college would, would offer, such as the, the OSET certifications, C certified technician and certified engineering technologist. And uh, those are possible by just uh, completing a, a law and ethics exam and submitting your some of the, uh, the work that you've done as you've gone through the program to the uh, Ontario Association of Certified Engineering Technicians and Technologists. So uh, quite a number of, of different credentials that you can get as part of the program, but really the biggest one is um, getting the actual diploma because that really means something. Uh, it's very well recognized in the industry. Uh, when see, people see a, a Northern College welding diploma, that, uh, that really stands out. So, um, so those are the certifications we offer. Wow, long list, I love it. <laughs> Thank you, perfect. Um, okay, so the next question, we'll start with Doug, um, and it's about the campus location. Let's talk more about the campus and the community and um, where these programs are offered. Okay, <clears throat> so environmental technician is offered at our Kirkland Knight campus, which, uh, well, I don't know if we need to tell people where Kirkland Lake is. It's, and the heart of the North, right? Um, anyway, yeah, Kirkland Lake is a uh, beautiful Northern Ontario community, lakes, middle of the Canadian Shield, uh, lakes, forests, uh, good downhill skiing, uh, cross country ski trails, uh, um, non COVID times, yeah, very active community with the uh, winter carnival and arts events and other things going on. Um, the, program at in the backdrop behind me you can see this is a photograph of the 
the main classroom um, teaching location that we have for this program. And we have, um, it's, it's a classroom. It's also our uh, lab where the, the lab skills are taught. And kind of in the far end, you can't quite see it too well in this panoramic photo, but we also have our own kind of miniature municipal water treatment plant. So that's a, a great feature that, that uh, gets the students hands-on experience with an actual drinking water plant. For very good reasons, um, students aren't allowed to mess around with a, a real drinking water plant that serves a community. Uh, there could be some very adverse effects on public health and safety. Um, so we've done the next best thing, which is to kind of set up our, our own. So that's it for me, but maybe. Awesome. Thank you, Doug. Um, Josh, since your programs are in the same campus, did you want to talk a little bit more about KL and the community? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, we just had a, a, a snowmobile races. So that's something that happens uh, every year. So if you're into snowmobiling, it's definitely a Mecca up here for that kind of thing. Um, the Doug had mentioned, mentioned uh, skiing and snowshoeing. So actually at the Kirkland Lake Community Complex, uh, you can rent out skis and snowshoes for free. And there's an extensive network of trails that uh, back in there. So we have, uh, it's a, a really, it's a true Canadian winter up here. You've got lots of snow. And so it's great to be able to take advantage of that. So there's lots of activities available. There's lakes everywhere. So ice fishing um, during the summer, I'm an avid canoeist. So, you know, if you want to do some canoeing, uh, let me know. We can hook you up with some canoes. Um, but there's lots of uh, lots of outdoor activities. Um, if you go up the highway a little bit, there's a, a mountain just near the uh, Quebec Ontario border that's some really great views. And uh, of course, uh, Jim will probably tell you about some of the sites that are available in, in New Liskard. But definitely up here, there's some awesome hiking and uh, outdoor activities, and you want to capitalize on that while you're here. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Okay, Jim, anything you'd like to add? And then do you want to talk a little bit about, about Haleberry? Yeah, I'm um, actually like to talk about um, Haleberry and actually um, Timmins because uh, the mineral exploration program is based there in Timmins. Uh, actually, I just thought I'd just add to my, my last section um, that students uh, can move on from the, the two-year diploma in mining. And um, there's uh, some of the better students um, think of going on to the two-year uh, Bachelor of Technology degree at uh, Queen's University. So we have pretty tight connections with the mining engineering department at Queen's. In fact, that's where I graduated from with a master's in 2008. So I know practically everyone there actually. Um, and so this, this, you have a special agreement between Northern College and Tem uh, Queen's University where um, Queen's will give us a, a two year um, leg up on a Bachelor of uh, Technology or BTEC. And then the students can do that uh, uh, the two years with Queen's uh, mainly online. Uh, there is some on-site stuff, but it's mainly online. And then uh, once they've graduated from Queen's, they can write six exams with the Professional Engineers Ontario and become professional engineers. So um, and the, um, uh, the other thing I'd like to add is that there have been 2,000 graduates from the Haleberry School of Mines since 1912, and some of them have done extremely well becoming uh, millionaires, if not billionaires, in, in the mining industry. So they have given a lot of money to the Haleberry School of Mines. I think our um, bank account is somewhere over somewhere between half a million and a million dollars. So there's um, a whole, uh, let's see, this year it was $56,000 in scholarships ships were awarded to the mining and instrumentation students. So yeah. that's a lot of money spread among a few students. So it's mm -hmm. um, on top of the, you know, generous scholarships that Northern College actually gives, it's um, a great boost to the, the students' uh, education. Okay, in terms of um, location, uh, like I said, um, mining and mineral exploration are distance programs, but when the students are in uh, Haleberry for those two weeks in May, then they can enjoy beautiful Lake Temiskaming, um, which is uh, picturesque. In fact, that's really the reason Haleberry is there, because it has this beautiful view of uh, Lake Temiskaming. And when all of that money was produced from the, uh, uh, what was it, $15 billion in silver they mined out of cobalt, all the rich people moved off to Haleberry to produce one really nice town. Um, there's also New Lisker just north of us, uh, which is really an agricultural area that's uh, tied into the, all the, the farming that happens in the clay belt. 
So there's a farmer's market there and uh, lots of uh, services. Uh, Timmins uh, is, I guess, about uh, 60,000 people. It's the, the main center in Northeastern Ontario. And all of these eight places, their real claim to fame, from my point of view, is there's about 30 mines within a three hour drive of my office in Halebury. And there's not many uh, mining schools in the world can say that. Um, so there's a lot of places to work, a lot of places to work with. And um, even uh, we have an applied research department. So we're doing research with uh, a number of these mining companies, which students can become involved in those research programs. Um, so, and of course, instrumentation not to be left out. Uh, it is an on-site uh, program. And a lot of the students do live in the Halebury, New Liscard area um, when they're going to, through that program. Uh, lots of local housing. In fact, I think when I started at Northern College, um, I was living a two minute walk from the, the campus. Uh, so a lot of students live in, in the neighborhood and it's, it's a very pleasant place to live. Awesome, okay, thank you. Uh, so next question is about the benefits of these programs. So we'll start with you, Josh. What is one, we'll limit it to one year. Make sure we don't run out of time because we're not even halfway through yet. Um, what is one benefit of taking these programs? Yeah, okay, so Jim had already, was already mentioning uh, scholarships and, and bursaries and definitely there's, there's uh, quite a, a, a wealth of, of opportunities there. So um, Northern College of Students, uh, the welding students are consistently recognized. Um, a good example, um, one of our recent graduates who just graduated this August, Megan Rapard, uh, graduated from the technology program. Um, she's been recognized for her efforts through several awards at Northern uh, including two from the Canadian Welling Bureau Foundation, um, the Joseph G. Doria, Doria Exemplary Student Award, uh, which was $3,000, and the Hugh Krent Student Award, which was $3,000. So, wow. uh, yeah, so that's that's actually not that uncommon. There's a lot of money that's out there for welding students. It's uh, welding is a um, is an area that uh, is really in high demand, and governments recognize that. So there's a lot of money that's available right now for that sort of a, a career. Um, and of course, we have many awards that are available specifically to the Kirkland Lake campus and specific to uh, technology programs. So our students tend to, uh, to do quite well because we have small class sizes. So sort of the same, um, same phenomenon that Jim was describing where you have a small number of students and uh, quite a big pot of money, lots of opportunities there. Awesome, thanks Josh. Okay, Doug, what is one benefit of taking the environmental tech Wastewater, Ugh, there's a whole other little bit to that title here. But we'll <laughs> water and wastewater <laughs> systems operations. Yeah, it's so catchy. I know. <laughs> well, the, the real benefit is if, if you think that this is a field that you're interested in working at, that we have kind of the fastest and most focused path for you to learn about it and to get um, in employment. And in, in ordinary non-COVID times, the way the program is structured is you get a chance to earn while you learn because the, there's 12 months of academics and woven in between those three semesters, there's the opportunity for three co-op placements where you could be working in the industry and accumulating the hours that you need as well as getting your academic uh, knowledge such that two years from the time you start into the program, and you can start in fall or winter, but within two years, you've got everything you need in order to enter the industry, not just with kind of the learner's permit, but with the full operator's license. So you, you enter the industry at a higher pay scale. Awesome, love it. Okay, uh, Jim, one benefit. One benefit. Um, well, the thing that strikes me for um, mining and mineral exploration is I'd say about three quarters of our students are actually working, a lot of them full time. The, the program is really set up that way. So I'm often, you know, my student will say, I'm doing uh, three weeks of fly in to a mine in Nunavut. Um, can't get that assignment in. Can I have a little extra time? So I, of course, always bend um, schedules to uh, give them extensions for that sort of thing. So the, the program is set up is the same sort of, you know, earn while you learn but that's actually more the rule than the exception in terms of people working. Um, also the benefit for instrument 
transportation, um, uh, the uh, Hydro One uh, people who produce our electricity here in Ontario with their nuclear plants, they really favor hiring instrumentation students. And I understand these students do very well, um, starting with something close to or in a six figure salary. And they live in places like uh, the Bruce Generating Station area, which is a lovely place on uh, Lake Huron or you know, Darlington, same thing on sort of the Eastern part of Lake Ontario. So some, some very attractive lifestyles that come out of uh, instrumentation uh, graduation. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so next question is about admission requirements. So what are some general admission requirements for students that haven't applied yet? Josh? So the admissions requirements you need to have uh, for the technology or technician program, you need to have your grade 12 um, college or high school diploma um, with grade 12 level math, that's either college level or university, um, and also the English. Uh, for the welding fitter program, you need to have, um, you know what, this is embarrassing. I'm mean, going to have to just, Kara, you might actually know what it is. Um, <laughs> I, I, have the, I have the view book here. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, uh, of grade course, 12 English and grade 11 math. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Uh, another question here, I just, I didn't have it on my sheet, but I just wanted to know how many students do we accept in each program? Like how many seats do we have? Right. Okay, so for the welding programs, the, the cap is, is 20 students. So that's 20 for the welding engineering technician and also uh, 20 for the welding fitter program. Awesome. Okay, Doug, what are the general admission requirements? Okay, so it's uh, <clears throat> Ontario Secondary School Diploma with grade 12 English, college or university and grade 12 math, college or university. Uh, chemistry is not required, but we, since we do teach it, but if you have some background that can help you. And we have classroom capacity of 18 students. Perfect, thanks Doug. Uh, Jim. Uh, the admission requirements for all three programs, mining, mineral exploration and instrumentation are a grade 12 math and English courses. Now, if students don't have those, there's a great upgrading department at Northern College uh, that is, is actually free and you can study with them and uh, get your uh, grade 12 math and English and, and be ready to get into the program. But I also mentioned that um, the mining program, we introduced a January start uh, last year. So we've been doing that the last two years and that's actually very popular with students. They wanna start in January instead of the regular September start. And that what goes along with that is you can do the four semester mining program as a five semester program and they're all full time. So you can actually get uh, full time OSAP support for five semesters and spread out the courses over five semesters, which helps if you're working full time. That's a great option. Yes. Um, I just wanted to mention, as Jim said, about our up academic upgrading. We actually just did a webinar this past Thursday on academic upgrading. So if you did want more information, uh, for those listening, where you registered for this one, you will find that past webinar on the same webpage. So check that out if you want more information. Um, okay, thank you, Jim. Um, can you paint a picture for our viewers of what a typical day in class looks like for these programs? Let's start with eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Uh, Doug. <laughs> okay, well, look behind me. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Well, of course, it depends on what, what course you are taking, right? There's um, some courses are theory only, but then there's, there's practical um, classes as well. And, you know, actually, if it's okay with you, I will just share for a second. So this is just a little logo, I mean, that, to capture the different kinds of subjects that, that students take. So the, uh, the experience varies by, by course, and, you know, we end up, giving people uh, background in all of the different areas that, that students have to know or plant operators have to know. So they learn practical things with pumps and motors. You're taking apart some pumps and motors and troubleshooting them. You get the background in mill writing and machinery and electricity, which is kind of setting up things in the plant. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a, a big course in instrumentation. It's not enough to get you anywhere near being the two-year instrumentation program that Jim was talking about. But when you're working in a, 
drinking water, wastewater plant. Those have processes that are uh, automated and there's different meters and instruments that help uh, the operators know if things are running properly or not. Um, so we teach you about chemistry, about the specific legislation, provincial or federal, um, some math, the kinds of applied math. It's not that hard, but it's uh, the specific kinds of um, problems that you need math to solve when working in the plant and um, how to take um, water samples and do the other lab procedures, et cetera, that are, are required. So it's, a, it's an interesting mixture of things. Great, thanks for that, Doug. Love the visual, helps, definitely. Um, okay, Josh, what is the typical day? Yeah, so um, each program is gonna have a little slightly different flavor as far as what you're going to expect. Uh, if you're in the welding fitter program, one of the real um, things that stands out uh, is the amount of lab time. So you're going to have a, sp uh, a significant amount of time in the welding shop. Um, so for example, um, during this semester, I believe the students are looking at, I think it's 12 hours in a week um, spent in the lab. That's, that's pretty significant. Um, and it's, it's something that's costly too, right? So uh, if you compare that with our competitors, one of the big things you want to look at is look at the timetable and look how much time is spent uh, honing your welding skills, because that's really what's going to make you employable. And uh, it's something that some colleges might try to steer away from because it costs the college money. You're just going to cost you materials. Um, it costs you a lot of consumables. So definitely a, a big selling feature for our program. Uh, then you're going to have some time in our theory classrooms where you're going to learn a little bit about the welding. You're going to learn a little bit about, about the metallurgy, um, some of the quality control aspects, and uh, then technical drawings is a big part of it too. So you'll have some blueprints. You'll be learning how to interpret blueprints, uh, learning how to, uh, to draw up um, welding, welding drawings. So that would be done in the CAD lab. Um, so there's a lot of um, a lot of hands-on in that welding fitter program. Uh, if you look at our welding engineering technician and welding engineering technology program, it's a lot more uh, theory-based. So um, students often come to the program expecting to be practicing their welding skills, uh, and they're kind of surprised. So that's that's not really what the focus of the program is. It's more on learning the science and technology behind welding. So if you go into the welding shop um, uh, in a welding engineering technician or technology course. Uh, you're probably going to be uh, maybe carrying a clipboard with you and you're looking at uh, setting up maybe an automated travel carriage and uh, putting a few welds down on a, on a plate and then you'll cut those, those plates to do a cross section, do an etch to, to look at the microstructure. Uh, so you bring it up to our metallurgy lab and we've got a full suite of uh, microscopes up there, which uh, by the way are brand new and uh, really quite um, quite fancy microscopes, we're quite excited about them. Uh, so you put them up there and you're gonna look at the microstructure and, and learn to interpret. So you'll, you'll be looking at it and saying, okay, oh, there's, there's some martin sites. So I'm, I'm gonna expect to see a sort of a brittle, uh, but high strength sort of uh, behavior with the steel. Uh, maybe it's got some perlite or some ferrite. You're gonna learn to, uh, to identify those microstructures and what they mean. You learn about different heat treatments. So we've got heat treatment furnaces uh, in the metallurgy lab and you learn about the effect that uh, the, the heat treatment process has on the, the characteristics, the mechanical properties and the, and the microstructural properties of the steel. So um, again, it's not going to be, uh, you know, go down to the welding lab and practice laying some beads. That's, uh, that's more, if, if you're interested in that, definitely the welding finner program is, a, is probably a, a great spot to go, um, but uh, it's, it's more focused on the technology. When you get into the third year of the program, you're gonna have classes that will look at things like failure analysis. Um, you're gonna be looking at welding circuits where you kind of learn, you take apart a welding power source and learn how it works. Um, you're gonna be looking at some really advanced metallurgy. So there's, um, during every semester of the program, you're spending about 60 hours looking at either engineering materials or, or uh, metallurgy. Uh, so you get some really, really in-depth knowledge. Um, so yeah, a lot of time spent in the welding shop, in the metallurgy lab, and in the classroom. Awesome, thanks Josh. Um, okay, uh, before we move on, just a, before I go to you, Jim, actually, just a reminder that if you do have any questions that pop into your mind at all during this, 
please put them in the chat and we will be sure to follow up with those once we're done the questions. Okay, Jim, your turn. What does a typical day look like? Well, for the mining and mineral exploration students, since it's an online program, it's whatever they do in their regular day. Um, and then part of their regular day becomes attending live lectures uh, that our, our professors give over the um, internet using the Blackboard um, software. So for instance, this afternoon, I did a, uh, a live lecture on uh, surface mining, open pit mining, and went through PowerPoint and discussed all of that. And then I followed up with a tutorial, uh, which I had a, a particularly uh, mathematical question, which really got into uh, things, something called stripping ratio, which is how much waste you need to move in an open pit mine to get at the ore. But that's actually a pretty deep concept with multiple levels. So we got into all of that and explained how the, the students can do the questions on assignment that's due at midnight tonight. So that's, of course, of interest. Um, so that, that's the sort of thing that they, they do. They're doing uh, live lectures. If they can't be at the live lectures, we report it so they can watch it on their own time uh, whenever it's convenient. And they're, they're doing assignments. Now, when the mining and mineral exploration students then show up in their two-week field school in Halebury for mining, Timmins for mineral exploration, then they're out in the field most of the time. So they're looking at, at minerals. Both groups are looking at, at minerals um, and learning how to identify them, learning how to map them out, out in the bush. Uh, they're using surveying equipment to learn how to do surveying. And we also do field trips. So we did a, a four-day field trip to the Detour Lake Mine, which is uh, about 200 kilometers uh, northeast of Cochrane, so getting up towards North Bay, uh, sorry, James Bay. And um, they, that was really terrific because that's the, the Canada's largest open pit gold mine with a, like a really first rate uh, mineral processing facility. So we learned everything that was going on there. So we'll be doing field trips like that to local mines. So of course we have lots of mines that we can work with, which is a great way to be. The instrumentation program of course is different because uh, it's an on-site program. So there the students are spending a lot of time in, in the labs. Um, actually doing hands-on stuff with instrumentation equipment and then alternating between the labs and lectures, uh, learning about all the, the theory that goes along with the instrumentation work. Awesome, okay, thanks Jim. Um, so next question is one that we kind of covered a little bit, but if there's anything that anyone would like to add, please feel free to do so. Um, it's about co-op and pathway opportunities. Josh, if you wanna start, if you have anything to add. Yeah, sure. Maybe I'll just uh, share my screen. I've got uh, um, a PDF here that shows some of the pathways. Can you see that okay, Kara? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So what you're seeing here is uh, just some pathways that are possible in the, uh, the welding programs. So uh, first up, of course, is admissions. And if you meet the requirements, you can get into either the welding fitter program or you can take the welding engineering technician program. So um, finishing the welding fitter program um, you graduate with the welding fitter diploma and uh, then you can get your, of course, your CWB tickets and uh, become, eventually you can become a journey person welder and or metal fabricator. Um, continuing on, if you want to take more, uh, go for more studies, you can take the welding engineering technician program, which is two, year, two more years of study. Um, and when you graduate with the welding engineering technician diploma, you can actually get uh, CGSB inspection certification for um, liquid penetrant, magnetic particle, ultrasound and radiography, as I had mentioned earlier. Um, then you can continue your studies for one more year. And at that point, when you graduate with the Welding Engineering Technology Diploma, you can get your um, IWT um, certification, which means you're an international welding technologist with lots of job opportunities that open up as a result of that. Um, once you finish the, the technology diploma, diploma um, you can continue your studies at McMaster um, and Jim had described a Bachelor of Technology option that's available to, uh, to graduates of some of his programs at Queen's. Uh, we have uh, um, an agreement with McMaster where our students can uh, complete two additional years of study to get a, um, a Bachelor of Technology specializing in manufacturing engineering technology. So students that, uh, that finish that uh, degree um, can actually take some courses similar to, uh, to what Jim was mentioning and uh, obtain their professional engineering designation. So once you have your professional engineer designation, uh, you can go to the Canadian Welding Bureau and become a uh, CWB weld engineer um, if you've got the, the required work experience and you pass their examinations. 
So um, that's kind of a, the, the overview of the different pathways. One thing to note is that the duration um, from start to finish, if you start the welding engineering technician program through to getting um, your bachelor of technology um, degree is about the same time as what it takes for typically to get a, um, a degree from an engineering program. So um, you're getting quite a bit um, packed into those five years and it's uh, quite a, quite a cost-effective and attractive option for people that are in, interested in getting to, into the welding industry. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. These bridge programs and these agreements that we have are quite the advantage, not only cost advantage, but you know, when you're, you're applying for a job and on your, under your education section, now you have two credentials that you can show for versus just the one degree. It really speaks volumes. And uh, also the type of learning is quite different between a college and a university. So you're kind of getting both learning formats, which I think really helps uh, in the future. So thanks for that, Josh. And Josh, Nathan Barber has asked if it's possible for me to get a copy of your welding pathways chart. Yeah, absolutely, Nathan. I can, uh, I can send that to you for sure. Awesome. Okay, who did I miss? I lost you. Probably me. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, Jim. Thanks, Kara. Um, yeah, so I, what I just thought I'd uh, mention is I'm getting weekly emails now from mineral exploration mining companies uh, looking for our graduates and also looking for um, people for summer jobs. Um, like there really is a gold rush going on in Northern Ontario right now. And I just thought I'd illustrate the numbers pretty simply. An ounce of gold sells for about $22 to $2,300 Canadian. And it costs about $1,200 Canadian to get it out of the ground, process it and uh, get it out to market. So that's about $1,000 Canadian profit before tax profit on every ounce of gold. And gold mines usually produce hundreds of thousands of ounces of gold. So 100,000 times uh, 1,000 is $100 million in profit for every 100,000 ounces of gold produced per year. So some of these mines are churning out like half a billion dollars in profit a year. And that produces- yeah, Jim, sign me up. Oh, sign you up, <laughs> yeah, right. Go out and find some. Um, <laughs> And, and of course, that's that's what's going on right now. Okay, that the price of gold has really uh, risen strongly in the last year or so. Um, but what's in the future is the world will be short um, very soon uh, of minerals like cobalt and nickel, lithium, uh, and copper too, which is needed for wires. Because all of those you know, batteries that people are putting into electric vehicles and making huge storage um, batteries for solar and wind power, uh, power generation, uh, that's gonna take a lot of, of these battery metals as they talk them, about them. On Thursday, I think it was, Thursday or Friday, Elon Musk, who I'm sure everyone knows who he is, um, he bought a big chunk of the uh, nickel mine that's on an island in the South Pacific called uh, New Caledonia. M a copy of the uh, mine's name is Goro, G-O-R-O. And anyway, the reason he's doing that is because the world's going to need a lot of these metals. So for instance, uh, virtually walking distance from my office in Halebury is the only cobalt processing facility, that's cobalt metal. The only cobalt processing, processing facility outside of China um, is in Timiskaming Shores. And that's being financed by one of the world's mine, largest mining companies, Glencore. And uh, it's first cobalt from Toronto that's building that plant and getting it all going. And we've actually done research with them on identifying cobalt minerals in drill core. Um, so this is where Northern Ontario is going and it's gonna need a lot of people. Like uh, for instance, the gold mine that they're building near Gogama, that's uh, I Am Gold from Toronto is building the Cote gold mine. They need 1000 people full-time to build that mine, 450 full-time jobs to operate it and that'll be ready in about two years. It's $1.5 billion to build it. So this is big business and this is a lot of jobs and it's a lot of uh, money that people can make uh, working for these companies. Uh, and it's actually a very pleasant lifestyle because you're living in, in beautiful Northern Ontario and making a good living doing it. So these are good reasons to uh, become involved in this. The instrumentation program is involved in all this too because of uh, all the very sophisticated processing facilities that are needed to process all of these metals, as well as the other things instrumentation graduates do like work in manufacturing and also working uh, in power generation. 
So lots of opportunities. And like I said, they're, they're emailing me every week saying, we need people, help us. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's definitely true. We hear that, especially with welding as well, right? Yeah, welding too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask you, Jim, if you could talk a little bit about the um, electrical and instrumentation sort of, I don't know, bridge program we've got going on with ourselves. Could you talk a little bit about that? The bridge program from instrumentation? Yeah, so if they start in instrumentation, take the two years of instrumentation, then they can get their electrical with only one additional year? Oh, yes, yes, that's actually very, uh, it's usually more uh, common to go the other way. So they start in the electrical program. So that's based in Timmins, at the Timmins, okay. Northern College campus in Timmins. And they'll do the two years uh, in the diploma electrical program. And then they'll come to uh, Halebury and they'll, well, it's not, it's a two year program, yes, but they're generally doing something like three courses a semester because they get, uh, let's see, 15 of the courses out of 32, something like that. Uh, so they get 15 advanced credits, uh, transfer credits going from electrical to instrumentation. Uh, actually I actually have one student right now who's actually starting with this whole concept. So he's, he's actually uh, got it all worked out. We did a lot of work with that recently because he's starting with the idea, okay, I'm gonna start with electrical in January. So he's actually doing electrical in Timmins right now. And his plan is to complete the electrical program and then go on through instrumentation. So that will take him about three years, three, three and a half years perhaps to complete all of that. Awesome, yeah, what a great option. I know my father's actually in instrumentation, well, electrical instrumentation, and he always talks about how those two go hand in hand together. And it's great that we have that option to be able to get both of those diplomas in, you know, some like a more uh, compressed version, which is nice, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good, good match. Definitely, okay, Doug, uh, let's talk a little bit about the co-op and pathway options. Okay. <clears throat> So I mentioned before, we've got the two-year diploma that we've squished four semesters into three. And so if you take the co-op option, the other 12 months within that two-year cycle means that you have the opportunity to line up a placement at a drinking water, wastewater plant. Um, for the most part, students tend to try to go after municipal plants, but it's not limited to that because there's many industries require uh, wastewater operators like any, any mine or any um, industrial process that's a manufacturing process that's discharging water um, has to do so in compliance with the Ministry of uh, the Environment regulations. Um, so yeah, so if you find placements, the and they are the kind that are recognized, like there's a provincial body, the uh, Ontario Water Wastewater Certification Office or ALCO, that, that is the one that puts out the industry licensing. Um, so if the places are recognized by ALCO, then your co-op placement counts towards the uh, workplace experience hours that you need in order to be eligible to write your, your licensing e exams. Um, it's not the end of the world if you don't find a placement um, it, will, it just means that that sort of head start in terms of accumulating your employment hours in the industry is delayed until you find a placement or you find uh, work out there. Um, and I guess just to digress a little bit beyond that, the other nice thing about uh, getting your background to work in the industry via the college is that you have the ability to go on to higher level licensing. Um, license threes and four, for instance, that, that require a, a college background as a, as a minimum. Okay, thank you, Doug. Um, so I have one last question, and it's the question I feel like everyone is thinking about. Uh, we'll start with you, Josh. What does learning look like this fall with COVID? What is it impacting it? What's going on? Yeah, so um, it's kind of hard to have a crystal ball and know exactly what things are going to look like at this point. But, uh, you know, if, if it's anything similar to what we're doing right now, um, students are able to get all their hands on practical hours. Um, we have protocols in place for using our labs. So you're not going to miss out on any of that. 
Uh, any courses that are theory-based are done um, in much the way that the Jim was describing. So we use um, online platforms such as Microsoft Teams or Blackboard Collaborate to, uh, to deliver our teaching to our students. Um, and it works quite well. So, um, we, so far as the students seem to be in, enjoying this a little bit. And in fact, it's kind of nice to be able to come to class in your pajamas and uh, just kind of roll out of bed and, and uh, start your class. So, um, so it's convenient. And uh, I, I'm not sure what things are gonna look like when we completely return back to regular studies, if, if there will be a, a change to what the new normal is or not. But uh, it's, um, it's certainly, what, one thing I can promise you is that as a student here, you will not have any, there will be no compromise in terms of the amount of practical um, learning opportunities that you're going to have. Um, and uh, I don't know if I, if it's okay, Kara, if I could just go back to the previous item for just a second to talk about uh, co-op options. So um, <clears throat> one thing I did want to mention is that the, all three years of our, of our engineering technology program have a co-op option and uh, students can, um, can of course earn while they learn through that, uh, through that route. Um, and a lot of the time we find that students that, uh, that take the co-op option end up continuing with full-time work once they graduate. So it's, it's a great opportunity. It's kind of like dating your employer. Uh, like you get to try them out, they get to try you out. And uh, at the end, if things don't work out, you can just kind of, uh, you know, tell them it's not, it's not uh, you, it's me type of thing. And there's no hard feelings. And uh, you go back to your studies for another four months or another eight months, and then you can try somebody else. So it's, um, it's definitely a, a great option and uh, gives, gives students a lot of that industry experience, makes them that much more employable. So uh, definitely, you know, if you're applying to our welding programs, consider taking the co-op option um, and you, you really can't go wrong with it. Uh, I just want to add there, Josh, as a past uh, co-op and career advisor, I am all for co-op. It is such a great opportunity, like Josh said, uh, on your resume, it just gives you that experience before you even graduate. And as someone, you know, with an HR background as well, like someone looking at resumes and as soon as you see that, it, you just know that that person at least had real, real life experience. So it's great. Doug. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I just add to that too. I think that um, it really helps you with your theoretical studies when you've got a little bit more of a workplace sense and it's just things kind of the penny drops more often for you. 100%. Yeah. Um, is there anything you wanted to add, Doug, about uh, that little bit for what fall will look like? Uh, with your program? Um, no, not really. I, I mean, I think uh, everyone knows we're, we're all, it's, it's a race between the vaccines and the vax, the, uh, the variants, I guess. And uh, we're all betting on the good guys winning. Um, and we're all collectively doing what we can to, to, to tilt that uh, the field so that that outcome comes out. Yeah. So our college, like every Ontario college is, you know, continuing to take, um, every reasonable possible precaution. And um, yeah, we've uh, you know, cut back on the class sizes in order to, to you know, stay within, well, to, to minimize the risks and, and the, uh, that, that mixture of having theory courses by you take from home and practical on site. Um, that's a safe way just to reduce the density of people on campus at any given time. Um, we're all hoping and, and looking forward to the day when we can, um, you know, resume more regular deliveries. There's a, there's a, a big part of learning and the student experience is, is the social aspect. And I know some of many of our, our faculty are trying to include um, in the distance courses some, some student projects and peer-to-peer -peer learning exercises so that there's you know a chance to net with your classmates even when you're not physically together um, but we'll we'll buckle in and um see what happens <laughs> yeah see what happens <laughs> thank you doug okay jim well i'd like to say that since covid started i've read practically every article i can find on covid so um i think <laughs> the numbers are that um we're expecting to have 38 million uh, doses of vaccines by around July. That's the latest call in the last 48 hours. Um, so I would expect the whole country will be vaccinated before the end of August, which means we have a good chance that in September we may actually be back to regular operations. 
Um, but in terms of the courses that I'm responsible for, um, COVID really has had very little effect on the, the distance programs like mining and mineral exploration. It's sort of business as usual, with the exception that the field schools have had to have been rescheduled. So if, if there's a you know, variant outburst that causes us to reschedule from May to September for uh, our field schools, well, that's what we did like this past year, and we'll just do it again. Uh, September is actually a good time to have a field school in some ways because the weather's nice and uh, we can organize field trips easily. So that, that actually might be um, some ways better. Uh, the instrumentation program, the way it's been running has been a hybrid approach where the labs um, are, you know, maximum of 10 students in a classroom or in a lab, basically, wearing masks and doing distancing. Um, so the labs have pretty much continued as they were. Um, and then the lectures were, are online. But again, I think it's, there's good odds that we'll be back to uh, instrumentation being fully on site in Halebury by September. So uh, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Jim. Um, let's move to the Q&A portion. Hope, if you wanna lead that, what have we got going on? I believe you already touched base on this one, but I'm just gonna repeat the question just in case. Uh, the first one is, are there any parts of this, any parts of this program that can be done through Contact North Distant Ed? Okay, for mining and mineral exploration, uh, it's online. So that's, you're, you're doing it through the um, Blackboard software and the internet. And uh, although we are working with Contact North in terms of promoting the programs, um, that's um, basically if you have a laptop anywhere in the world and a uh, internet connection, then you're good. You're uh, you're you're a student. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So Con Contact North uses the Adobe Connect software, and they kind of bridge between the this program and the students and the prof. So, for instance, our law clerk program is delivered with the assistance of Contact North. Um, However, I don't think any of the, the programs in, in tonight's um, forum are, <clears throat> are, being, uh, are using the webinar tool that Contact North provides. We don't, uh, we don't offer anything specifically through Contact North, but again, online learning is, is right now is very much part of our programs. And even when COVID is not uh, raging, we do have a couple of courses that uh, are offered by distance. So um, I think there's some there's a business course and it's a good experience just to get some, some uh, experience with distance learning. So, uh, so students do get one or two courses as, as part of the uh, completion of their studies. Um, yeah. Awesome, okay. And the last question is, are, are the live lectures for mineral exploration during the workday or at night? They're during the workday, um, but again, it's, it depends on you know, what, what one is working. You know, some of these students are working night shifts um, as well as day shifts. So um, the, the lectures are always scheduled between, let's see, 8.30 and 5.30 um, in terms of you know, the, the very first beginning and the last ending in the given day. But of course, they're always recorded. Um, Generally, lately, um, I've been getting a recording back from the Blackboard people because they have to process it in about 30 minutes after the lecture finishes, sometimes less. And so I, as soon as I see it pop up on my email, I put it onto Blackboard. And so if you know that there's a lecture starting, let's say at uh, 1230, it's finished by, say, 230 or 3, you know it's going to be available by 330 or 4 if you get home from work at 6 it'll be there and you can see it, you know, only with a couple of hours lag. Of course, also professors are always like myself are available by email. Um, I'm always looking for emails from students and we, you know, answer pretty promptly and uh, we can also organize live sessions by telephone or by Blackboard. Okay, um, there's also another question that popped out. Um, let's see. So this question states that, is there currently a quarantine time required before attending classes in person if coming from a different region? So I can respond to that, that um, so far the province has not put any kind of restrictions in place uh, on 
travel within the province? So that's all the questions I've received, um, Kara. Perfect, thank you, Hope, appreciate that. Again, if there's any last minute questions, just pop them in the chat and we can always um, answer those before this ends. I have three things that I need to mention. I need to make sure that I say them now or else I'll forget before the end here. So first thing I wanna mention is our entrance award, which is $1,000 for any student that applies to a diploma, advanced diploma, or a degree program, including the pre-service firefighting program. It's $1,000 automatically towards your second semester tuition. So a few of the programs, or actually quite a few of the programs that you heard here tonight do qualify for that uh, award. And I do believe that you need to register for the program by April 5th. Am I correct? Sumit, Hope, 5th, 6th, 5th, 6th? I can't remember. I think it's 5th. Yeah, 5th, April 5th. Um, next thing I need to talk about is I'm going to mention one more time open house. Super important that you're there. April, oh, all these dates, I'm <laughs> really struggling here. April 8th from 6 until 9 p.m. It will be fully online and uh, be sure to check out our social media as well as our website because we will be promoting that quite a bit and you can learn a little bit more about that closer too. And then the final thing I want to mention is about the new PSW program that will be starting in May, uh, fully funded by the government. So if you do want more information about that, I think we have 70 or so seats available. Uh, please reach out to one of us, one of the recruiters here, and we'd be happy to get you more information about that. Okay, I'm done my spiel. Is there any last questions before we wrap this up? Speak now. Uh, if you guys want to just pop maybe your emails in the chat for students if they have any questions, uh, maybe they can just jot down your email there and that might be easier. Yeah, Kara, that's one thing I wanted to mention is that I'm more than happy to answer any questions that people might have about the welding programs. If you want to shoot me an email and uh, I'm happy to do follow up Zoom calls or anything like that. Perfect. You know what, Josh, if you want to just save your email for the recording, uh, that way someone that can't see the chat later is able to jot your email. Down. Yeah, so it's fullerj, that's F-U-L-L-E-R-J at northern.on.ca. Perfect. Jim? Yeah, and my email, I just typed it in there to the chat, um, and it's Kendall, K-E-N-D-A-L-L-J at northern.on.ca. So two awesome. L's in Kendall. Awesome, thank you. And then Doug, I don't know if you wanna leave your email or maybe you wanna leave. Um, well, um, I'll send mine up there. It's Clark DJ, there's no E on Clark, at northern.on.ca. Okay. So, so I just want to say hello to my future student, Mark Vesenko, who's online here, I just noticed. Hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Mark. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. I think we can all say we had a lot of fun tonight. I don't think my cheeks have hurt this much from laughing so much during the webinar. <laughs> I appreciate that, it was good, what a good night. Uh, and um, be sure to check back on Tuesday. We will be having another Navigating Northern session and I believe it will be on community services. So you can register on our website for that. And we do these every Tuesday, Thursday from 6.30 until 8, until open house, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a great day. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye-bye.